We, the North. In many ways, we're in a league of our own. One step removed, just beyond the boundaries. Some would say we're on the outside looking in. But from our perspective, we're on the outside looking within. Because that's where the effort resides. Toughness is found. The aggression is tapped on the inside. We're far from the east side. Miles from the west side. Nowhere near the south side. We are the north side. A territory all our own. And if that makes us outsiders, we're in. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Episode one of the Toronto Huskies franchise mode is finally here. I hope you guys did enjoy watching that very well edited, nearly professionally edited introduction for the Huskies. We did already the introduction video, and we also did kind of like a meet the roster as I did, I did a roster breakdown when I announced that the Buffalo Bills would become our relocation team. Now, in episode one here today, we are going to just basically be going through the season, the very first season, the relocation season, the final year with the Buffalo Bills. Now, I, I'm right now. I'm, I'm thinking out the bat. Haven't officially planned it out. Depending on how long it is, I'm gonna try and do the whole 2018 season here in just one episode, and then that means episode two we are actually the Huskies. But the big thing is, I don't want to feel rushed because I want the scouting process to feel really, really good. Because I only have the 2019 draft class completed, and it's fully completed. So that's where we can actually do in-depth scouting and kind of player breakdowns and stuff like that. So, uh, so far, you know, I'm not going to lie. I'm really going to be going with this video as I record it. First thing is first, we're just going to sim through all of the preseason games. I feel like there's no real need for us to play the preseason games. More so, maybe we can just check the recaps and see who's performing, who's not performing, and more so... Uh, who's going to be available in the free agency wire to potentially improve our team. So, what do you guys know from our roster introductions? We have the updated roster, so we do now have Corey Coleman on the roster, which is nice. I mean, we have seen him in the Browns rebuild go up to like an 85 overall. He's 24. He's in his prime. And this was a team that was hurting for wide receivers. We have uh, Kelvin Benjamin, who's a little soft. But maybe we can develop him into a franchise guy. He is 27, so I don't necessarily know how high his ceiling is going to be. But he should be productive and a nice jump ball specialist. Uh, Josh Allen is going to be our starter, man. We're rolling with the cannon himself. 6'5", 222 pounds from Wyoming. Strong hard quarterback. Now, this is where it's going to get interesting because I'm definitely going to want to try to get him to fit within the scheme. So we're going to be spending our points on field general because strong arm quarterback, I mean, he already has 99 throw power. He's pretty much peaked. Even though he's a 74 base, you know, the big thing, the big bonus that you get by upgrading uh, the strong arm player arch archetype ideally would be to continue to get your guy as close to possible to that 99 throw power. You obviously get a lot more other attributes than just throw power, but trying to get that big money one, that is what you get from the strong arm archetype. So developing field general is going to be the direction that we're going. Look at the offensive line. It is not very good. Long term, Deion Dawkins, as we stated in the previous kind of you know introduction video, uh, he's pretty much the only guy worth a damn on this offensive line. So we have our work cut out for us, and it might not be the sexiest of drafts this upcoming draft because we're going to have to rebuild this offensive line. Defensively, we're at 81 overall, which is good. We have some old guys that I don't know how much they're going to be able to bring to the team long term, but I am excited by Micah Hyde. We got Tredavious White. Oh, how old is Trey, Trey White? Like 23? 23. He's going to be a franchise. He's going to be absolute ball. Now, the only problem with Trey White is we're going to need to get him into the old scheme fit there. So we're going to be developing him into a zone corner. Um, that's pretty much it, man. Tremaine Edmonds. Again, how far is he off being our scheme? Field general, that's an easy one to upgrade, so I'm not too worried about that. And then, of course, we got Jordan Poirier, who is a scheme fit, and who also is a scheme fit, is his wife. <laughs> so, um, nothing too crazy. I would say for the specialists, I am going to be going with uh, Tremaine Edmonds over Keenan Robinson for our sub linebacker. We have Zay Jones over, say, Curly for the slot wide receiver because we're trying to build up players that can be long-term options. Curly's kind of old. Same with Keenan Robinson. Uh, other than that, not a whole lot has changed. Nothing much that's coming our way via roster changes until we get to the final week of preseason. So let's get through these first three games. 
So our first game of the preseason against the Carolina Panthers, Cam Newton versus Calvin Benjamin, was not hot at all. 40 to seven, we got absolutely smoked. Garrett Gilbert, who has the weirdest, like brightest looking picture in this game, three touchdowns on the day. McCarron, two touchdowns, one pick. And let's be honest, we, we kind of throw praise on Jordan Poyer's wife. AJ McCarron's wife, everyone should know her by now if you did if you watch any college football. We might have like the all-time WAGs team, wives and girlfriends team with AJ McCarron and Jordan Poyer. Uh, Josh Allen got one drive and got sacked and got six yards, which is not what you want to see. But hey, Nathan Peterman didn't throw an interception. Not gonna lie, rest of this doesn't really matter. So let's jump into what I think we should look at, and that is scheme fits, because we haven't really found the ideal scheme, and maybe that's why we got smoked against the Panthers. All right, so for offense, we're going to go power run. We know that they're, they're a power run, a base power run, which doesn't really suit Shady McCoy, but it does Josh Allen. It ma matches his scheme type, his archetype, which is all about just making life for Josh Allen easier. And then defensively, we're going to be rocking base. You know, the multiple and the base. We look a lot better at a base with the 86%. We're going to rock that. Sean McDermott, one of the last disciples of legendary Philadelphia Eagles defensive coordinator Jim Johnson. It's why I'm a fan of Sean McDermott. Better believe we'll be getting after dudes with that base 4-3. Very fearful defense we're going to be bringing this year with the Bills and in future with the Huskies. Let's go. There's a confidence boost. 42-14. to Finally flexing our muscles here a little bit. Bengals had four turnovers, so our defense came to play. Josh Allen, 145 yards, one touchdown. I'll take that. Oh, thank God. That's why. They had Matt Barkley, maybe the worst quarterback I've personally seen wear a Philadelphia Eagle jersey. Turnover king. But, you know, in reality, the third preseason game is usually the game that most of your starters play the first half. And the other games are more so finding out, like, your roster fodder who's going to be on your practice squad, stuff like that. So for this being arguably the most important preseason game and getting 40 points against the Bengals, I'll take that. Chris Ivory, 79 yards, two TDs, Shady, 77 yards, and a touchdown. We ran all over them, averaging over five and a half carries for both of our main backs, and Cadet also got in for a touchdown on receiving front. We did a good job shutting down Speedster John Ross, Charles Clay, 40 yards and a TD, Benjamin, 30, 30 yards-ish, and a touchdown. Uh, blocking, how many sacks did we give up? Two sacks, and it's Deion Dawkins again. Step it up, boy. Temple tough. Defensively, Keenan Robinson is playing out of his mind, man. Ten tackles. We got a sack from him. A half, a sack and a half from Harrison Phillips, who I guarantee you guys I will make him a stud within a year or two. Pretty much just let Kyle, Kyle Williams retire, and then Phillips will take over. Uh, Robinson, Kyle Williams got a sack. Half sack there for Hughes. We got a pick from Trey White, Raphael Bush, and Phillip Gaines. I'll take that. I'll take that. I'll take it. I'll take it. So now that we are entering the fourth and final week of the preseason, we have to cut 21 players, which essentially for me is making our practice squad. So all these guys here, we don't need them. You gone. You gone. Malachi Dupree. I liked him at LSU. So we'll move into the practice squad. LJ McCray. You gone. Terrible name. You're gone. Never heard of you. You're gone. Breon Borders. I think he's from North Carolina. Either way, move back squad. Ricky Hatley, D tackle. Good strength, 88 strength, but that's why it's so hard to cut you. Austin Prohl, Ricky Prohl. I like that speed. I'm not going to lie. I wonder if we can keep him on. Kelsey McCray, gone. Keith, you're gone. Bye, Keith. Xavier Woodstat, last name's too long. We're going to save money on jerseys because we don't have to print as many numbers. Sierra Neal will go to the practice squad. Ray Ray McLeod will go to the practice squad. Ramon Humber is gone. Marcus Murphy has been our special, like our return man, but I think we might be able to grab one by a free agency. Rod Streeter, you're gone. Logan Thomas should have sticked that quarterback. You're gone. I like Adolphus Washington. How many more? We got to get rid of two more. Taiwan Jones, I don't need the speed. And I guess we'll put Austin Prohl on the practice squad. Our final preseason game, we got absolutely smoked by the Chicago Bears, 38-7. That was a steamroller, but, you know, we were already playing just our bench guys there. No one meaningful played. And now we're in that very valuable period between the end of the preseason and the beginning of the regular season where we can kind of see what has been released on the free agency market by other teams, maybe who landed on a practice squad that could crack our main roster. Because I know for sure two big-time positions I want to look at upgrading is slot corner, which our current starter at slot is a 69, and a kick returner. We definitely need a prolific, electrifying kick returner, a.k.a. hit the free agency market and sort by speed. All right, so for our practice squad, we got we didn't sign anyone really new. We got Ade Arunia. We signed him from free agency. Same goes with Christian Campbell, a rookie, and Malik McDowell, the high draft pick from the Seattle Seahawks. Had some injury issues. 
figure why not stash them on the practice squad, see what we can get. But we still have two open spots on our roster, our final 53, and there's I'm already kind of perusing, seeing what was there. And I know one move that I want to make. Now, Spencer Ware is kind of enticing, but, uh, you know, he's not going to be a future running back here. He'd just be more of a stopgap. But here's one guy that I kind of think could be decent. Jalen Samuels was an absolute moneymaker player for North Carolina State. He did it all. Running back, wide receiver, fullback, everything. So what I'm going to do, even though it says he's a running back, I'm going to sign him. And he's a 68 overall running back. I want to make him a tight end. Because we don't really have much in terms of youth at the tight end spot. I have a feeling he might jump up in rating. So he went from, what, a 68 overall running back to a 75 overall tight end. There you go. You guys want some cheese? There's some cheese by knowing the draft. Jalen Samuels is a 75 overall rookie linebacker. That, that's not even cheese. That is IQ. That's a high IQ play. Who would have thought to move a running back? Dude, he obviously he's undersized. 5'11", 223. We'll find a way to make him work, man. We'll find a way. That's, you know, Charles Clay is undersized. Even though he's bigger and is a giant compared to him, he's still undersized. Undersized tight ends will be able to work in our scheme. So we still have one more available player uh, to land. I mean, it doesn't need to be on the practice squad. Our practice squad is full. I mean, there's some interesting names there. Boston Scott from uh, Louisiana Tech looks pretty intriguing, but I want to try my best not to sign practice squad rookies because that way there's, it's kind of a cheesy way of building your roster. But Boston Scott, man, 92 speed. I think he has, like, decent carry, 83 carrying, but he is sitting there on the Saints practice squad, and I, I'm going to have to resist. we got some speed here in Keith Marshall, 94 speed, but uh, I need either a nickel corner or I need a, a just a return man. So when we're looking for straight up slot corners, you want to look for a couple traits. But one for me is man coverage. Man coverage usually helps out, and that's why you're seeing a lot of these sub, you know, six feet tall. I know. Oh my God, Jamal Agnew not only could be our slot corner, I know for a fact that he is a danger determined. Why is he not on their main roster? What's his return? I guarantee he is crazy kick. 91 kick return. Darius Phillips is not bad, but he's a rookie. But if you're going to let Jamal Agnew go on a practice squad, he not only will get starting snaps for us, he will now be our number one kick returner. So no, we just had one hellacious free agency period to get two fun on players. We took a 68 overall running back and made him a 75 tight end, and we desperately needed a slot corner and or a return man, and we got all two of those in Jamal Agnew. So... That is awesome. Let's make sure that Agnew is on special teams as our return man, which I guess we can just auto-sort all this. And now we are ready for our week one matchup against the Baltimore Ravens. We do have a media question here. Jonathan Coach, the coachman, coming up a poor season a year ago. Now then a less than an impressive preseason. Where is this team headed? Ah, there's always a win now. Tally, dangerous. We're going to win. Take a little time. We're seeing slate. There's 16 games. I think we can go. That is it. It is time to wipe the slate clean. There are 16 games ahead of us, and I think we can get into the playoffs. Tell the fans what they want to hear, especially because, let's be honest, the, the Bills are coming off a playoff berth. Now, the roster, not many people, I would assume, is, is expecting them with a rookie quarterback to make the playoffs again, but you never know. Let's get into it. We got this opening game against the Baltimore Ravens. Let's do some damage. Oh, Shady! First play in the debut game of Josh Allen. And LeSean McCoy says, come here, young buck. You might be invited to my next birthday party that's females only, plus Josh Allen. Let's go. Couldn't start the year off a better way. Toronto fans already excited about the Toronto Huskies with a play like that. Here we go in the red zone, searching for Josh Allen's first career touchdown pass. And let's see what we got. Kelvin Benjamin is a great red zone threat, but we're not going to force it in if we don't have to. Great protection. Josh Allen takes it in. Gets popped. But his first career touchdown, the man with the cannon, is with his legs. Underrated scrambling ability. Bills up 14-zip against what should have been a very stingy Ravens defense. Oh, no. Oh, Josh Allen. <laughs> James Allen, Joshua James Allen, J.J. Allen. That was sloppy. Jimmy Smith is too much of a wily vet to bite on that one. Oh, that's a filthy juke. That was a disgusting, 
This guy, I haven't got a juke move like that in years. I gotta get a replay of that. Josh Allen finally gets his first touchdown pass. His first interception came before his first touchdown pass. But the connection with Zay Jones, the faith to give Zay Jones the starting slot position over Curly seems to pay dividends. And there you have it. The first game of the Josh Allen era starts against Lamar Jackson. And the run game was clutch. Josh Allen, 12 of 16. Very good QPR. Lamar Jackson wasn't bad at all. But 280 yards, a touchdown, and that pretty bad growing pains of a rookie interception that we suffered on the play-action pass. He had too much time. LaShawn McCoy went off. 117 yards, two TDs. Josh Allen also got a rushing touchdown. Receiving Shady. Three catches, 97 yards. You swear to God, he was wearing Philadelphia Eagles green, having a game like that. One hell of a game. Get, this guy's going to be getting a Team of the Week matted Ultimate Team card. Zay Jones, two catches, 61 yards, a touchdown, and the sickest juke move you'll ever see. Defensively, for, for what it matters, 10 tackles, a half sack for Tremaine Edmonds. Jerry Hughes got two sacks, a sack from start to Latula Lay. No interceptions, but still really proud of this team. And the first game of the Josh Allen era goes off with a bang. Now, you know, because this was this was monumental, we had to show the first game of Josh Allen. Now we'll pop in the sim a little bit and get progressing during this transitioning period from Buffalo to Toronto. All right, I think this is going to be a good spot to end this episode, which means hopefully tomorrow we will have another quick turnaround episode where we can finish this first relocation season for the Bills going to Toronto. But we're going to end it by you guys deciding what uniform we actually select for the Huskies. Um, but I guess we should uh, summarize where we're at here at Week 7. We're sitting at 2-4, and four, getting ready for a big 2-4 and four battle, a winnable game against the Colts. Looking at our win-loss record, uh, we beat the Chargers 32-31. We're off to a hot 2-0 and start. Josh Allen in that game, 400 yards passing, two touchdowns and two picks. But from that point on, downhill, I mean, we lost against the Vikings as, as expected. Packers lost, expected. Titans lost, probably expected. Texans lost, probably expected so we lost uh to, against some pretty good teams i mean that chargers win and even the ravens win those are these are all this is a tough schedule for the bills all these guys are legitimate playoff caliber teams uh now i came back to re-record this part because it went on too long so i was able to sign two of our impending free agents we got a keenan robinson to a two-year deal seven mil and Kelvin Benjamin, even though he's 300 pounds, to a four-year, $39 million contract because we really don't have much outs. And the reason why, you might be saying, why are you signing Robinson? Well, you'll see as we go through the stats. Quick stat recap. Josh Allen, 1,700 yards, 9 TDs, 11 picks, 9-11. Got to get him off that. That's not good for views. Shady, 367 and 3, not too bad. Receiving. Our standout receiver right now, 400 yards for Kelvin Benjamin. Get that nice contract. But Zay Jones, 352 yards and three touchdowns. Corey Coleman needs to get it going, man. Defensively, 53 tackles from Tremaine Edmonds. We got a couple interceptions there. But look, this is why. Keenan Robinson got that money because he has eight sacks right now. Look at his career numbers. He hasn't even got more than one and a half in his career. So we kind of... Pulling a, a uh, Lorenzo Alexander, where Alexander bounced around from team to team, came to Buffalo, had a huge year. Maybe we're having that in Robinson, so we give him some money to hopefully continue that. Um, the next episode, guys, I will show off some of the scouting because we do have the full draft class that I know you guys will be interested in that. But as I stated, we are going to finish this off by you guys deciding what style of jersey we pick for our team. We have style one, style two. And Style 3. Now, Style 3 was the jersey combo we used when we last made the Huskies back in Madden 17. Still my personal favorite, but it's up to you guys. One, two, or three. Let me know in the comment section below. I'm hoping to have Episode 2 out tomorrow, which will finish out this regular season. Do a more in-depth on the scouting and all the rookies. So make sure you stay tuned for that. But I hope you guys did enjoy this first episode. It is kind of tough because we have to get the miscellaneous stuff out of the way before we can officially become the Huskies. But I hope you guys did enjoy. If it's your first time stopping by, don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button. We're going to get ready. I'm going to make this the best franchise mode series on YouTube. Thank you for watching. And until next time, it's C4 saying peace out. You ain't messing with the flow. You ain't messing with my vision. Messing with the money. You ain't messing with decisions. Yeah, you messing with the team. Then you messing with the squad. Mess with one of us. You be messing with them all. Yeah, yeah, yeah.